for prosthetically driven implantology, that's the whole nature of this. That's the beauty of this, the why. Patients want teeth, they don't want screws, they want the teeth. And the teeth have to look right, and a big part of them looking right is starts with the surgery. Was the implant placed in the right position? I've placed probably too many implants, especially in the freehand days, that were too shallow or off angle, and what ends up happening? Com compromises on the aesthetics of the tooth. It might be stable, it might be restorable, but is it ideal from, the, um, from all aspects of long-term um, implantology and then the aesthetics of the restoration? So we want to get in this mentality of like digitally waxing up our future vision first. And this is especially critical when we're doing full arch planning. We want to plan the teeth first and then just go put the implants, ideally in the bone, but that supports the tooth plan. So the digital wax up gives us that control. Now this is where you know, we can have our lab do wax ups or we can do it. We're gonna teach you guys to do it. We want you guys to be able to control this process because you guys know the patient, you know the teeth, uh, and you understand that there, there's a profitability component um, and it's not hard to do. So even a single tooth, especially in the anterior, when I drop these files in, I don't just go first and grab an implant and drop it in the bone in, in the adjacent space. I go and grab a tooth, an anterior tooth, and I size the tooth in that space. Then I grab the implant and line it up through the cingulum of that anterior tooth. So think tooth first, implant second. That's the whole beauty of this process about why we do guides. Um, on number 30 uh, in the back, do I go grab a molar every time? Not not every time, right? We know that it's got to come up through the middle between the teeth. We know where the occlusal, you know, the occl uh, occlusal plane is going to be. But it, we do need to be thinking about our depth, because as you guys, if you guys have done enough implant dentistry, you realize that the depth of placement is huge, both for the success of an implant in immediate implants, and then the restorative side for like proper emergence profile long-term bone health around the implant. Depth is probably our biggest thing. And that's the thing I've probably learned the most in placing implants is that it, it's much more common to place an implant too shallow than too deep. I see that just a lot. And so that's personally helped me probably more than anything is just making sure my depth appropriately supports the restorative side. And it's all about getting, you know, getting the plan right, being able to do cool stuff like prefab immediate temps, um, and then, you know, makes, you know, for full arch cases, it can make our chair side conversions easier versus a denture. We can have actually the hybrid pre-printed with holes in it lined up where the implants are surgically planned. And so here's the picture I showed. Uh, this is, this is where the magic happens is these teeth were waxed up before the surgery was ever done. So it didn't happen by accident. It wasn't that this is where the implants were, so we just built the teeth there. It's that we knew where the teeth were going to be beforehand. And then we don't end up with this. Um, sometimes we have to do this, but this is the classic approach of, hey, the surgeon just needs to have the implants lingual to the incisal edge. As long as it's lingual to the incisal edge, we're good. Um, because the restorative dentist can put these screw holes anywhere in this big old trough. If it's out here, you're screwed, but as long as it's back here. So the tendency is to put them way back. Um, sometimes we have to do that. Obviously, there's a lot of factors to this, but in a perfect world, I as a patient would rather have something sleek and less tongue, uh, less tongue inhibition if possible. So this is just kind of an example of the whole why behind this, this planning. And even if it's not fully guided, I mean, understanding the planning is important. You might look at a case and be like, I'm really, I'm really going to freehand this full arch case. Totally fine. But it, let's, let's at least plan it digitally. Let's do a wax up. Let's look where we want our, our, our screw hole access to be and then go execute it with that knowledge. That's okay. But at least we're thinking digitally about prosthetically driven dentistry.